risen. And it, it is indeed the day to celebrate. I'm going to be reading eight verses from John chapter 20 for this short message this morning. The Apostle John writes, The first day of the week cometh Mary Magdalene early, when it was yet dark, unto the sepulchre, and seeth the stone taken away from the sepulchre. Then she runneth, and cometh to Simon Peter, and to the other disciple, whom Jesus loved, and saith unto them, They have taken away the Lord out of the sepulchre, and we know not where they have laid him. Peter therefore went forth and the other disciple, and came to the sepulchre. So they ran both together, and the other disciple did outrun Peter, came first to the sepulchre. And he, stooping down and looking in, saw the linen clothes lying, yet he went he yet not in. Then cometh Simon Peter following him, and went into the sepulchre, and seeth the linen clothes lie, and the napkin which was about his head, not lying with the linen clothes, but wrapped together in a piece by itself. Then went it also the other disciple, which came first to the sepulchre, and he saw and believed. You join me in prayer one more time here. Our Heavenly Father, we have read just a short portion of the Gospel of John's account of that resurrection Sunday morning and how beautiful it is. But Father, as we look at this passage this morning, help us to understand that the tomb is not empty. We need to look at that, Father, and I pray for open and receptive hearts and spiritual eyes as we talk about that. Bless our time together. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. There are a lot of misconceptions about the resurrection of Jesus. Did you know that? There are so many misconceptions. That there's a misconception about the stone being rolled away so Jesus could get out. I'm going to tell you, by the time the stone was rolled away, Jesus was gone. The stone was rolled away so we could look in, not so Jesus could look out and get out. But another misconception is about the tomb itself. How many times do you hear this time of year, people say, we're going to talk about the empty tomb. The tomb is not empty. Unoccupied? Yes. Empty? No. For many people, that's what they see, though, when they look into the tomb of Jesus. And when they see an empty tomb, it's sad because they miss something of great importance. What do they miss when they look in that tomb and Jesus isn't there? Well, what remained in that tomb is very important because it tells us of a great truth. So what did Jesus leave in the tomb? He left the linen grave clothes and the napkin that was bound around his face. He left that in the tomb. In other words, Jesus left all the grave clothes behind. Why would he do that? Why did Jesus leave the grave clothes in the tomb on that resurrection Sunday morning? It's a good question, isn't it? Well, to understand this completely, we have to take a two-mile journey. We have to go over to Bethany. If you want to understand why those grave clothes are left in that tomb, we have to go over to Bethany. You know, just a short time before Jesus made that willing sacrifice at Calvary for us, he was over at the tomb of Lazarus. And Lazarus was sealed in the tomb with that large stone. It was a stone that Lazarus could not move on his own. It was Jesus who commanded that stone be moved away that day. You know, for the unsaved, I want to tell you something. There is a great, huge stone that's blocking your entrance or your exit from this world to heaven. It's a, a block. That, that stone is a block between you and your salvation, between you and Jesus, between you and your eternal life. It's a huge stone, and you can't move it on your own. We, we are in, or at one time we were all in, the place of death. And we couldn't remove that stone on our own. It takes the coming to Jesus for salvation, and then and only then will He command that great stone be rolled away. You know, he commanded after He prayed, He commanded, move that stone away. You remember, what was the comment of the people that day? Lord, He's been dead four days. You move that stone, it's not going to smell well move the stone. And then Jesus commanded in a loud voice, Lazarus, come forth. 
Why did Jesus have to come in in a loud voice? Do you ever think about that? Jesus could have said, Lazarus, come forth. He would have come. But why did he use a loud voice? I think he had to do that to really convince Lazarus. Lazarus didn't want to come back. Did you realize that? A believer never wants to come back to this world. He did it so Lazarus would obey his command and so that everyone around could hear what he was saying, that he was giving that command. And the Bible says, He that was dead came forth bound head and foot in grave clothes, and his face was bound about with a napkin. Wait a minute. Now we see something different here. Lazarus comes from the grave. He's alive, but he's still wearing his grave clothes. You see, those grave clothes represent sin. And before you come to Jesus Christ, you are bound head to toe in the grave clothes of sin. You know, that's what Lazarus had been before he came to Jesus. Just as every person either was or still is. You, know, you say, well, I can't see it, but they're there. You're bound head to toe. And with the command, when he came out, what did Jesus command? Loose him and let him go. And that's exactly the same command he gives us when we come to him from salvation. Loose him and let him go. What he's saying is remove those grave clothes. He won't need them anymore. You know, each one of you here on this resurrection Sunday morning who are born again, heard the words of Jesus at the moment you accepted Him as Savior, loose Him and let Him go. Jesus commanded it. No one else can do that. That you would be, those sins would be removed, those grave clothes removed. Now, there are two other reasons that Lazarus came out of the tomb still wearing his grave clothes. First, he could not free himself. You know, you can't do it. How could Lazarus do that? He was dead. And once he came back to life, he's bound. He can't get loose. He had to wear them out. And this demonstrates the absolute fact that you cannot work for your salvation. I don't care how hard he worked, he was not coming out of those grave clothes. For by grace are you saved through grace and not of works. It's a gift of God. Secondly, Lazarus brought those physical grave clothes out with him again because he was going to need them again. He's going to die again physically. He's going to die. You know, if you go back and read the story, you find out that the religious leaders right away wanted to plot to kill him. They wanted to remove that witness. He had been seen by the multitude of people physically dead. He had been in the tomb four days. Jesus brings him out. That is a tremendous miracle. They wanted to stop that witness. Yes, he was going to die again. He needed those clothes. Okay. Now, let's go back that two miles just outside of Jerusalem to that garden tomb. They're laying in the very spot where the crucified body of Jesus Christ laid were his grave clothes. And on the other side of the tomb, the napkin that was about his face. Jesus was in no hurry. Did you notice that? When he left that day, everything was accomplished. It is finished. There was no more rush. Everything's on God's time. But he left those behind. And he left them behind because of three reasons. First, you know, the grave clothes were not his. Did you know that? You ever realize the fact that Jesus, those grave clothes didn't belong to him. He was wrapped in them, but they were not his grave clothes. They were your grave clothes and they were my grave clothes. He was wrapped in our sins. He went to the cross for us. They're our grave clothes. That's where we should have been. We were actually in the tomb there, dead as four o'clock, as we say down here in the sound. Because Jesus upon that cross took your sins and my sins upon himself. He died in our place. He took the punishment we deserve. Now on that glorious resurrection Sunday morning, he rose from the dead and he left those grave clothes behind. You see, those grave clothes represent sin and therefore our eternal destiny. Those clothes are the grave clothes of sin, the sins of the believers in Jesus Christ. He left them in there. He left them in the place of the dead. We don't need them anymore. The Bible tells us that our sins are forgiven and remembered no more. Remember on the cross, I mentioned a minute ago, it is finished. 
they found that term on the bottom of tax records from those days. It means paid in full. It's paid in full. Jesus left our sins behind. Our sins are forgiven and remembered no more because it is paid in full. Unlike Lazarus, Jesus is eternal. He's going to live forever. He will never die again. He died once willingly for the sins of the world. Now He lives eternally to make intercession for us now, doesn't He? We find over in Revelation the devil's making accusations against us day and night. And Jesus is our defense attorney. Our Lord left those grave clothes behind. So also another reason so that we can be assured that we're always saved. If He would have brought those grave clothes back out, you know what that would have meant? It would have meant that we could have lost our salvation. It would have meant that He died for nothing. If we could lose our salvation, then Jesus would have taken those clothes because we would have no sacrifice again. Jesus is never going to sacrifice Himself again. We'd have no hope. If we could lose our salvation, His first sacrifice, if we could lose it, would prove it was not worthy. That's what it is. If you can lose your salvation, Jesus' sacrifice was not enough. But praise the Lord, the very Word of God tells us over in Hebrews 10.10, 10, by the which we are sanctified through the offering of the body of Jesus Christ once for all. Never again. Aren't you happy and rejoicing this morning? that the tomb of Jesus is unoccupied, but that it's not empty. So how many times have you read that and not even realized how important it is? I want you to listen to the testimony of the angel on that wonderful morning. Matthew records this in Matthew 28, 5 and 6. And the, ans the angel answered and said unto the women, Fear not ye, for I know that ye seek Jesus, which was crucified. He is not here, for He is risen, as He said. Come, see the place where He lay. Notice where He lay. Past He's gone. He's not here. He's risen. So, the message for us is not, let us look into the empty tomb, but He is not here. He is risen. And that's the glorious message of Resurrection Sunday. He is not here. He is risen. But what Jesus left in that tomb was so important for us to see and to understand. May we pray. Our Heavenly Father, our short first sunrise uh, resurrection service, Lord, was just meant to focus us on the glory of what Jesus did for us. And I thank you that that tomb was unoccupied but not empty. I thank You that our grave clothes are in there buried away that we'll never need them again. Oh Lord, it's wonderful to know that our sins are forgiven and remembered no more. I ask that You would continue to be with us through this day as our 11 o'clock hour time will approach. I ask that You be with us as we have a brunch together now, Lord. Pray that you would bless the food for the nourishment and strengthening of our bodies. I ask that you would bless the hands that prepared it. And Lord, we thank you for the wonderful bounty that you always supply. And it's in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen.